Hello, Michaela. Welcome to Inside the Industry. Thank you for coming. Hi, I'm so happy to be here and see your face. It's been a minute. For those of you that don't know, I've had the absolute blessing of working with you, not only for Share Press, but some other fun stuff for Broadway.com. You have been, the second I met you, I was like, um, first of all, just love your face, love the canvas. It was so much fun and you let me play. So I was like, oh, she's creative. And when I found out your whole story about not only how young you were and this being your first Broadway gig, being in Share the Musical on Broadway. I was like, um, I need to know a little bit more about this chick. So we brought you on here today to talk about all of that. Your journey being young, successful, popping off, coming through with talent, <laughs> baby. She's here. I, I was just so stoked. Anybody that also I ever mentioned that I knew you or I had done your makeup and played, they were like, oh, I'm obsessed. Like, I love Aww. her. I'm like, I know, well, that's the nice. nicest. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. This is what it is. I was like, no, she's the best. Um, I kind of want you to tell us a little bit about that because for me, when I met you, like you had just talked about, we, I mean, so many people that get young and popped off, if you will, it's, you know, they still went through college or did they did a little bit. They're still young. You know, young for me is anything under 30 and even in the thirties, but we're talking about industry, yeah. you know, age and when we're getting into things. So you were in particular, were very, very, very green and young. You were fresh out of high school, baby, and you booked baby. Cher. Tell me a little bit about that process, booking that gig. Well, I, so I went to LaGuardia, which I will say is like not a college by any means, but also like I did four hours of drama every day. So I majored in something like there was a level of, um, um, of like career driven kind of feeling at that school. Um, and so I did shows all four years, but um, agents would come all the time to to see performances. And um, I like never got called. A lot of my friends would get called, like, but there was just like, I was not someone who they were like seeing and then wanting to send out on auditions. And then my final show that I ever did was Gypsy. And I played Louise, which truly was like, one of my favorite roles just because it I like you get like the biggest arc in the whole show it's so fun um and like Laura Benanti is just so good in that show so like watching her videos on YouTube and all the bootlegs like it, she was That's just so like fun. everything um and now I like know her crazy so anyway so I did that show and um CSD my agency uh, came to see it and I kind of started freelancing with them a little bit throughout the summer right before I was supposed to leave for Carnegie Mellon um, and you know I wasn't necessarily looking for a gig I was just kind of trying to like get my feet wet in the audition right. world to figure out what that would feel like um, and ended up getting the share breakdown and being like ah like I don't want to go to Telsey, this big casting company in New York and, and, you know, be embarrassed yeah. because I'm doing like a really shitty share impression. Like that's not actually like how I want to get my feet don't wet. Get, yes. So I was like, called my agents was like, I'm going to pass on this one. And, oh, and I know, and I think that was like a Friday. And then the audition was supposed to be Monday and they called me on the weekend on Sunday and they were like, we really think you should go. Like you shouldn't pass on this one. And I was like, okay, no. you know, like now I didn't well, I even memorize the size. Like that, though. So, no. <laughs> so I go in like one casting assistant, like no one's in the room. Um, and we just like play for a little bit. He, his name is Pat, who like ends up being like this incredible person throughout this journey, kind of like my go-to at, at Telsey and like just the nicest guy. Um, and then um, and then I get a call back and then I'm like, oh, well now I want it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Didn't want it before, but now that I'm like in the mix, <laughs> I want to be up in front of the mix, you know? Um, and so then I get a creative team appointment. And, um, of course that was like also kind of this dream because behind the table is Jason Moore and Rick Ellis and, we just did Peter and the Starcatcher in high school. And like, there's Rick Ellis, the writer of Peter and the Starcatcher sitting behind the table. Like just this like kind of dream of dream scenario. Totally. Um, and I do all of the material. And then 
the day after I finish that callback, I have to leave for a trip for birthright. Like I was going away to Israel for two weeks right before leaving for college. Um, like last hurrah with my best friend, like just a fun thing. And so I'm like, hopefully this is the last callback because like I'm fucking out of here, you know? So they're like, you have another callback. And I'm like, I'm leaving. What do I do? And they were like, you know, I ended up going in the day after I got back, like so jet lagged Okay. and it was a work session, which kind of means like not really people are in the room anymore. It's just you and the director. And you're just like, kind of like you're, you're thinking like rehearsal room, like let's work on this material together. Does that feel like less pressure to you when that happens in that scenario or more? For me, it was way less pressure because I have been in rehearsal room settings my whole life, right? I love getting notes. I'm like, I know exactly. Once I was like, this, they just want to see if you can take notes because you're really freaking young. I was like, I'm, I, I'm okay. Like, I, I love this stuff, you know? So I'm in the room and we're like bouncing off of each other. I have straight hair. It's like, you know, I like did the whole get up and, um, and then I walked out and Pat, that first person who ever auditioned me, I was like, I cannot believe I'm saying this, but I'm literally supposed to leave for Carnegie Mellon in, in like 24 hours. And I don't know whether to keep packing my apartment or not. And he was like, we'll let you know tonight. Stop and I get it. home and 30 minutes later, I get the call. No! And- oh my gosh, this is like life upside down. So crazy. So crazy. But lately I was just having this conversation with my boyfriend, Nathan, because he went to Carnegie Mellon and I was saying like, there are so many things that I missed about the college experience and the friendships, the the work experience, like all of those things. There are so many things that I missed about that experience. But I will say I never made this connection until recently out of all the interviews I've done too. It's like weird that I never made the connection, but Mm -hmm. I always think about like, how did I get the nerve to like say that to Pat? Like, please tell me when and like really feel confident. Right. Right. And I think it's because of my whole audition experience Mm -hmm. to go to college in the first place. Like I had never... I had auditioned so much Mm -hmm. in that year for, for big high stake things that I was like, share, like probably not even going to get it. And so for so long, I was like, I spent so much money auditioning on the college experiencing college experience and, um, you know, trying to stressing myself out. But it's like, if I didn't go through that experience, I probably wouldn't have felt confident in those auditions. So it's just one of those weird, like crazy, you know, journeys, but but. crazy. Like you're saying though, where you do have that kind of like light bulb moment of like, everything makes sense as to why that happened for you and how it did everything because so many people I know you know when we are younger I myself was a total youth I still consider myself a youth to be very honest yes, yes. and I'm like okay um being in the industry and so when I was young and popped off or getting into it I got a lot of like not from not from everybody but kind of like the questioning like why are you here how did you get here do you deserve to be here that kind of vibe and I had to constantly reassure myself that same kind of sentiment of like I, I am supposed to be here. I didn't go to college myself. I went to right. makeup school. So I identify with you with that. Yeah. And it is a weird thing at times where you're like, why, why did it happen the way that it happened? What was, why is this a part of my trajectory? Why was I so like abundant in like pushing forward to get there now, instead of going through, like you said, kind of that arc of, you know, where, what the traditional route is supposed to be before I get to these points in life. So did you ever even take, did you ever have any sort of guilt being where you were so quickly as well? I've talked about it with some other friends. Did that ever occur to you feel that? Yes, I did. I think I almost think about it now more than I did in the moment because things were so high stakes. Yeah. Like, you know. Adrenaline. Like you're in a. Adrenaline. Like you're surrounded by kind of like all of these like famous people. Yes. Or famous to you, right? Like Stephanie J. Block is famous to me. Like. Jason Moore, famous to me, like all these people. And I think there was a part of my brain that was like, don't stop and think about it because right. you just have to like remember the new lines. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, that's a dumb example, but like, no, if I thought too hard about having 70 page changes, 
and the fact that I had never gone to college and tried to m- memorize that many pages at yeah. once, which like Nathan had done, I, I would have got lost in the mix. I would have gotten left behind a little bit. And I think like my weird. brain was like, just, just go, just go, just right. go. And it's weird. Cause you do, you would trip yourself up a little bit. Right. Cause I know I get in some spaces where I get to like, damn, I've done this person's makeup. I've been in these rooms and I'm confident and it's cool and it's a breeze. And I'm like, I got this. I'll go home and kind of geek out. But there have been times, like you said, almost as I'm getting older, that I'm I'm overthinking and assessing things way too much beyond belief that I'm ruining the spaces or the places that I'm in. Not, I don't want to say ruin, ruin, but like I'm just not living yeah. much in the experience because I'm being too geeked out over what it is and what it means and what it could propel me to. It's like I put too much pressure on the moment, you know? That's such a human thing too. You hear that all the time. Like it was after I got famous in this movie that I started second guessing myself on set. And it's like, you know, even down to like a very, you know, long ago example of being a kid and never thinking about like the nine waffles you ate that morning because they were delicious and it was amazing. And then you get to 15 and you're like, maybe I shouldn't have done that because what if my friends, you know what I mean? Like there's more, there's more second guessing and it's such an interesting thing that I think we all try and fight against as we, as we get older. Yes, you have to. It's like, nope, stop it. Get back to that your state of just being and living and, and trusting yourself really truly that I am meant to be there and do what I'm doing I think you've done I mean personally working with you I think you've done a fun, phenomenal job at it um and I've appreciated you in all the spaces that I've got to work you with um is there anything during that process I want to kind of dip our toes in the share as you're finally there yeah. was there anything that felt like once I hit Broadway I feel like we all you know I'll put it in terms like this before I worked at Lion King I fantasized about what it would be like working there, what it would be like backstage, how it's going to go when I'm running my track, all these things. So then when I got there, a couple things were like, oh my God. And it clicked off to how I imagined it. And then there were other things that I was like, whoa, how did you imagine being on Broadway? And what were the things that maybe clicked? Or were there some things that you were like, oh, did not expect that. And I had to learn that. Um, Yeah, it's a great question. I will say that, um, a lot of the dream stuff yeah. that I had imagined uh, were dreams, were okay. dreams. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> totally, yeah. there were so many things totally. that totally hit the line. Mm-hmm. And then there were so many things yeah. that like also were there that I just didn't, didn't ever yeah. think of. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is interesting. And I think <laughs> like, uh, this sounds weird to say out loud, but there is like a part of me that was like, nothing changes. Like, this is just nothing changed from high school to Broadway. Like, of I, course there are, of course there are things, but like. But the general the, blueprint of it is the same. Yeah. Tech is the same. How the game is done is the same. It's a wild. At, like drunk tired and you still you still have moments of like why was I just a bitch you know what I mean right. like I never wanted to be that person you know I'm like, like, snapping. no I get it listen it's human I still I was of course I was more nervous on opening night than I had ever been but I was still so nervous in high school you know what right. I mean like, right. there are so many things that really never um which is that, kind of comforting I, for those listening it Trying to yeah. get to, it's a comforting thing to think, you know, we fantasize about being in these high places, especially in our careers. And to think at the end of the day, once you've done both, you're like, I'm really not that far off from just no. letting go of fear <laughs> and doing the damn thing. Yeah, but it's, it's hard. Like also, you know, when we think of all of the famous movie stars and then they just end up being humans who like also have this, like, of course, like, why did you think anything else? But it's hard for us to fathom that they could be anything like us, like have that anxiety. This is weird, but because I just watched the SNL episode with Adele hosting. Oh yeah. And she was so clearly petrified. Petrified. During her opening. Kept cracking. Killing me. Wait, like, that is Adele, you know, she has done this a million times and yet here she is like the, like, like her voice, like quivering 
And yet, like, just because she has a makeup artist and a beautiful hair person, you know what I mean? It still it doesn't look a little bit more. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's like on the outside, the set is bigger. Yeah, but like, yeah. that's about it. Yeah, that's <laughs> the set's still, the set still it, broke in Chicago. We still yeah. had a broken set. Our <laughs> stage manager was still like running around. You know what I mean? It's so, so crazy. It's such a similar thing. But I'm, I'm trying to that. Yeah. What were you going to say? No, I'm just saying I, lo- I love knowing that. And it's very comforting too when you do identify. It's almost like to think that Adele, when she did that, you know, going to SNL, her getting the call for SNL, she probably freaked out just as much as you would for getting, I'm going to be a share on Broadway. You know, she's like, whoa, SNL. And you think that once, again, you get in that realm of like, uh, just successful people, the people that are, you know, the movie stars, whatever, you know, musicians that are famous. She has X amount of Grammys. It's like, it would start to be less, um, that, like unfathomable that she would even have that opportunity. But she still is so like, for God, that oh my God, I I'm but here doing you see that all of the time because you are with people when they're getting when ready. Mo- right. No, it's crazy. They're yeah. getting teed up for the, for moments that are like, quit. Like I remember sitting with you, which is, this is exactly what we're talking about, right? So wow. the Tony, yeah. the Tony performance, right? Yes. 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 And, and I'm sitting there, I'm like on Nathan's lap while you're doing my makeup. I still I remember that picture vividly. I love it. And, and it is the most um, unglamorous process you right. could possibly think of. Like right. the Tonys, you're like being bussed there on a literal school bus. And then like hopping out, hopping back in. Like it is the weirdest, most like flyby situation of your life. By. These people watching the Tonys and they're like gorgeous dresses and all of these Whoa. things. Like, You're like there are parts of it that are glamorous, but like I was eating literal dried mango maybe <laughs> 27 minutes before performing live on the Tonys in front of all of my heroes. Like that is crazy to me. Yes, yes, it is. Wild. Those are the days where people are like, wow, it must be luxury and they're so taken care of. And it's like, do you know those days always the biggest craziest days those are the days that I barely eat I barely stopped I'm not hydrated by the end of the day I feel so depleted I feel ill and I'm like you guys think it's so wonderful like, There's nipple, so like nipple tape pulling oh. hairs off of weird places like that is not glamorous like you know no, but it's it's weird too at the same time where it's like because this is the type of shit that I was trying to aim to talk to about on the podcast. And when I talk to people I'm like that, there's so much I love about it, but I just see what it's doing to younger women, especially because of imagery and other things of this unidealistic and it's just unrealistic expectations of not only what your experiences are going to be, what fame is like, what beauty is, but all these things. And so I love when people like yourself, it's so major Michaela to hear you speak in that way and take it down back to reality you know I kind of want to twist into your platform a little bit because I feel like there are now so many eyes on you right as far as new followings people knowing your name people getting familiar with you in the Broadway scene especially do you feel like when it comes to using your platform and you knowing about all the things we talk about Do you ever, and I feel like you do a very good job about it with the way you post and how you use your voice. Do you make it a note to kind of re-remind people in the industry that like, it's not, it is a lot of smoke and mirrors and like, this is the real deal type of deal. You don't really present me fake pony, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, weirdly, this is like random, but you know how you have those like certain people on Instagram, you're like, I want my platform to look like that. Not like emulate it, but to be- just as real as that and yeah. Ben Ross and I mm. um who was Evan Hansen on tour and um he's a great guy he went to Carnegie I ended up when I was visiting I ended up staying with him mm-hmm. and then right before like his Car- Carnegie obviously found out that like I wasn't going and then at the same time he booked Evan Hansen so we kind of had these similar experiences uh, experiences at the exact same time and um he was like oh my he I remember his text like years ago being like I heard you booked I did too see you in the city you know and I was like, oh my god I'm like great so anyway, like I have looked up to his Instagram for a long time because he is so political. He's such an advocate for all of these things. And I was like, I want to be just as real as that. And I think 
what's different for, for me is that like, I have a lot of girls and women who follow me. Right. And, and I think I wanted to make sure that for me, that was the biggest thing I think was like, I'm in all of these naked costumes every night. I have experienced some weird things that like usual 19 year olds wouldn't have experienced. Like, and I want this to be real for people because I know this picture, like, of my stomach, maybe like, oh my God, I want her stomach as you're walking past. Right. But like, let me tell you like mm -hmm. the real deal with this stuff and like some things that happen. And I really wanted to make sure that was, there was no mirror on my, on my Instagram when it came to that. Yep. Um, and, and I, and I hope I did an okay job of that through the process because like, that was really important to me. And like, Absolutely. you know, it's not easy. Like, it's so true. Like Broadway does have some bad standards when it comes to that stuff. And I think like, because I'm in this younger generation on Broadway with, along with the people you're interviewing this right. for this, you know, series, yeah. like I like kind of have to, be the voice for for along with Ava along with these people who like I don't necessarily know but we have eyes on each other being like what do people what do girls need to hear right now right. um and to be really open and honest about our own experiences and our own struggles yes. um and that was just really important to me because I did struggle oh my gosh like yeah. you're 19 and I think the biggest thing for me was like I had think if you really do the math, right? Because I'm like technical when it comes to this stuff. Sixteen costume changes, a two show day, right? Sixteen times two, and every single time you're doing costume change, you see yourself naked in the mirror in front of you while you're putting on new clothes. And of course, not every time you're like, "Fuck that!" But like, but a lot of, of the time. Me. When I was nineteen, then, oh my god, you couldn't pay me to be in a share costume. It's, it's a really, I was going to say too, at the same time, what pressure on you it is to not only know, okay, now that I am put in this limelight, especially in this Broadway world, and I want to be all these things, I want to do right by all these younger women and people that I know are going to innately look up to me or perceive my images and want to be that or emulate that. And I want to keep it real. But at the same time, you're 19 and you're going right. through this transitional stage yourself <laughs> in retelling and keeping your own confidence up and getting yeah. yourself out of your own demons. And it's like, that's a lot of work. That's and just a lot of work. constantly changing my mind, like in, in, in ways that I'm so proud of when I look back on and in ways that were so stressful and, yeah. and hard. But it's like when you're at the beginning of a process and you're like, well, Cher looked like this, so I have to look like this. Right. That is what will make me a good actor, is if I look like mm -hmm. I've had my ribs removed. Right. right? Which is also <laughs> bullshit, right? Yes. But it's also like, that's actually not what a good actor does. No, that's no. not at all what a good actor does. And, you know, there are, you hear it with the movies and things like that, and you always hear men yeah. gain this much amount of muscle and lose this much amount of weight and da 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 da, -da and they have nutritionists and physical trainers and are also getting paid $50 million to do the movie. And it's like, yeah. if you want to do that, you go ahead. Mm -hmm. But when, when, you know, you're 19 and messing with your body like that, Very different game. Gonna be, there's going to be stuff you're going to have to think about now down the line. Like I could have osteoporosis. I lost my period. I like these, like, am I going to be able to have babies? Like, Right, these right. things like are Deeper. not worth the yeah. 10 pounds they're no. just not no, no. and I also wasn't getting paid 50 million dollars and I probably wouldn't do it even if I was I was I was gonna <laughs> say because it's good for you because let me tell you <laughs> so good because it's hard and it's like um kind of you know when they say like you know we could sit when we're younger and we're thinking about all the things you're like I would never do that I used to say all the time like I would never if I get cheated on I'm leaving my boyfriend well I got cheated on I didn't I didn't leave him so, not my current oh my god of course, no. of course. but in my past so it's all these things you can be like I won't I won't or oh I won't be that way and it's hard yeah. sometimes especially when money's on the table and you're in a situation you're trying to do things it's a really you know 
wonderful thing to see. And it's a practice. It's not just the one time I said it and I got it. No, you got to really practice this mindset of being so good to yourself when you're in this industry yeah. of not getting swept up by the money, the opportunity, the glitz, the yeah. glam, the, just the constant climbing. So the glitz and the glam that you think you're going to get with that loss, whatever. Stephanie J. Block had, had, you know, a tuna melt every fucking Saturday on her lunch break. And she didn't, she didn't try and lose the weight. She has a three-year-old. She is like a beautiful, like normal looking woman. Yeah. She motherfucking won the Tony. So yeah. you don't need, you don't need to look like you had no. your root removed because no. you know what Stephanie knew that I didn't at the beginning was that no matter how hard you try yeah. to fit a smaller box, which is the opposite thing we should do as women. Yes. You're never going to look like Cher at the end of the day anyway. No, no. All the, especially when you're doing so. No, never. That, and this is the other thing I want to touch on, Michaela, and I like that you segued us a bit, is that when you're doing a show in particular, this wasn't even your first Broadway show. This was the first show that, I mean, I understand you were the younger version, correct? Mm -hmm. Of Cher. So I know Stephanie had a little bit more pressure because she was like present day Cher. Yeah. Um, but it is a wild thing where actors, actresses, everyone alike, when you are playing somebody that is only still alive or that's an icon, mm. that is a whole different set of pressure added to your already job of learning the lines, playing a role, getting into character. That's different. Did that in that process, and I like to hear that you're saying, Stephanie knew it's so important because I see a lot of people, maybe they'll go method and they do their best to literally transform and live in their shoes. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I've never fully agreed with yeah. method acting just because I see how much damage, it really doesn't ever benefit the actor all that much. I just see way more harm done than ever when they're going this extreme yeah. route to become this person. You have to be so aware. Um, at what stage in the game did you kind of, did Stephanie help you get privy to that? Or was it a particular moment where you're like, I'm not, I'm not going to be Cher. I'm not going to be this young little sunny. Like I'm not. So yeah, I think like, I don't think there was ever a light bulb moment, okay. which is the truth of things. You know what I mean? You, yeah. I think I wanted there to be a light bulb moment, but there wasn't. And Stephanie was very helpful. And just like, as, as I watched her, I think it was like, oh, she's, she's so good. And she's not, she's not like in the gym for two hours before a performance. You know what I mean? Like, all these unrealistic, yeah, these unrealistic things that I had kind of set up for me to be successful, you know? And and I think, like, thank God I was surrounded by all of these older people. And yeah. I, you know, if they ever listen to this, like, right. I'm not calling them old, but it's like, thank God I wasn't in experience. Mean yeah, thank God. No, 100%. Everyone at Mean Girls is surrounded by people who are going through the same things. And it's like, I had not, not a one, not a one person was under like 26, you know? No, so, like, on top of, you were like completely the baby child. The, I was the baby. And I think like I, at the end of the day, it was like, oh, these people are going home to their families. Yeah. Oh, these people are like going out and like eating the mac and cheese after a show because like that what that's what fulfills them or whatever it is. And it was like, there was a moment where I was like, I'm literally having the best year of my life. Yeah. I am, you know, and I, and I don't feel like looking back on the year and remembering that like 70% of my brain space was going to like, what was my next meal? When am I working out next? It's just like genuinely not worth it at the end of the day. Right. And I think there's this idea that like, you're going to like blow up into this like you know never ending person yep. and like if you just trust your body like they're going to do so much of this like in insane psyche work we try and do your body is gonna know what to do you know mm -hmm. like you're not gonna like wake up after that like meal that you had the night before and the not, hippo not, like, but, right it's just not what happens and like you have to really like trust your body when it comes to that and so many times time after again yeah. I would be feeling sick and then hit the high note and song for a lonely and be like oh damn like my voice just did that and I have a cold yeah. and it's yeah no shit like you've done it a million times 
your body's trained your body when it's is getting trained. Like you can do it, you know? And I think like, I'm just so grateful that I had such a support system. I'm so grateful I was in therapy. I'm so grateful that like, when I lost my period, I was like, this is an issue and I want to solve it. You know what I mean? Like, and you just like figure it out, but that is like, it's a long process as, as a 19 year old to like, you know, somehow like regain a relationship with food that is like, and exercise that is like healthy and for your soul and not your waist, you know, but, um, and I will say that I don't think that, that, I, I do think that society puts things on you. Of course, being in a fitting with Bob Mackey, who has only worked with models, of course he's going to be like, uh, right, if, right, he's right. Almost trained because now he and himself he is, have yes. been formed by society to be like, well, this is high fashion, this is this model, and if you don't fit that model, well, I don't dress you. Of course. <laughs> so like, oh my god. <laughs> so like, of course that was hard. You know what I mean? As a nineteen-year-old, to be like, I, Bob, okay, okay, right, but Bob, then. Good. But then at the end of the day, like, just like men support men in getting abs. Right. That is all of them. No woman has ever said, no woman has ever said, I only like six packs and I only like large dicks. That has never been a thing. I'm sorry. I know a couple. I know a couple people that might have said it, but they don't mean it. Like, they meet the right one. They're not like, this is a deal breaker. No, it's like, I never. No. I don't know how movies have like, that is what men are ideal with. Like that has just never been a thing that women like are actually interested in. Right. Just like men have not necessarily put that on women. True. And True. So much of that is us and our own yeah. psyche. And, and we, we keep have regurgitating that same yes. narrative. I do like that. I think, you know, I'm a very hopeful optimist, Chuck. But it's, mm. I do see it happening at least slowly. And maybe that's just because where I'm choosing. I do too. My, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm choosing things to watch on TV. I'm choosing things to have on my Instagram feed. I'm choosing to to have and be fueled by things that are going to influence me positively. Like positively. Yeah. You know, it's not, um, I don't want to look at all these things that are going to mess with my psyche. But at the same time, I saw somebody post about it the other day. And I think it was through Allure or like somebody else. And it's like, as much as I understand that these beauty standards and these health standards are unrealistic and they're wrong I am still conditioned to want to achieve them even though I know they're wrong so it does take a lot of time and effort and it's a constant thing same thing with me I mean for me I'm like mine was always about my skin I'm like I'm a freaking makeup artist you think I want to show up with jacked up skin or not looking this way and I I'm gonna feel like they're gonna trust me I was always told look you know, the way that you want to present yourself well. And so I was like, dang, and I struggled with bad skin. So I was like, I don't even think I'm going to be worthy of being an art. Like I went through such turmoil with it. And the same thing, I mean, just as a young adult dating and doing things when I was, it was like, of course, body image and being healthy and looking at images of Kardashian types where it's this tiny little skinny body, big boobs, big ass. And it's like, all right, well, I I might not be able to get there, but I'll do my damnedest to at least get where my body could maybe go. And then I'll tweak and tweak and tweak. And it's like, I realized there was like a setting. It's a never ending game. Cause when I was little, I never thought about the size of my ass, mind you, never, ever, ever. Like I'm a tiny, very petite chick. There's never been like a plethora of body back there, but come my young twenties, that was all my focus. I was just like, got to do squats, got to get a bigger ass, got to get more tone. And I'm like, what is, what is going to monumentally change in my life when I have a bigger ass? <laughs> right. It's such a journey and it's your own personal one. I have a partner who loves me no matter what, how many cookies I eat. It's right. just like, yeah. you gotta, you have to, you know, learn to, to love yourself in any body that you were given. Yeah. Um, and and how it changes. Yeah. And, Yes. It, there's just, and it's, oh, especially as women. I mean, my God, our, our bodies, if you choose to have kids later on in life, it's a full vessel to literally birth a whole new life. You can't imagine your body has to do things and create and move and, and have role. Like I always tell my girlfriends, they're like, Oh, look at these roles. I'm like, that's so your body can bend. They're there so you can physically move your body. Like, come on and be comfortable yeah. enough. Also, I've now looked at, like, and really wrapping up on this subject, because I know you and I could just go forever, girl. It really, I think, mindset too for people listening is food 
can be looked at multiple ways. Like you said, it can fuel a lot of happiness and, you know, listen to your body when it's craving things like do right by it. Don't starve or, or, um, uh, reserve things. Just don't push it away. But also remember food is energy. And once I started viewing it like that, I was like, Oh, I'm going to feel better when I eat. I'm going to have more energy. I'm going to do my job better mm-hmm. when I have sustenance in me. Because for me, because I also have digestive problems, so I'm sure this again, right. conversation yeah. be really round. So I always have, and then my anxiety pulls into it where it's like, oh, well, if I'm on a job and I have to perform really well, but if I eat this thing and then maybe my body doesn't want to digest it right, so then I'm going to feel like I need to go to the bathroom. Right, 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 right. Okay, yeah. well, I'm just going to skip the meal because I don't want to have to deal with all that because I don't have time to go to the bathroom. So let me move that aside. I'll just focus on this. I'll binge eat later to get my energy back. And I am just, my digestive system is going like this. My energy is like crazy. My migraines are popping. It's just like the more we can just remember to fuel our bodies we're going to be better off. You're going to feel better, like hands down. So with all of that, yes, yeah. you your body, do what and, you need to do. And if you have, if you, if, you know, there are people listening who do have these digestive yeah. issues and that is such a real thing, totally. find, find someone who, you know, has an approach to like figuring out your stomach issues that yeah. do, that never counts calories, that never does any of that shit, yes. you know, no, no. it's going to be a trial and error for yourself, but it should never be a diet. It just no, shouldn't. There's no, t- um, you don't need it at all to diet, to be honest. It's just about things that might irritate you or not. And just finding right. substitutes, finding not, substitutes rip, not getting rid of, just a substitute. It is, it's such a hard, um, it's such a hard journey for women when it comes to hormones when it comes to all of these other uh what are they called other like things that are coming into your life throughout your age and like I am so grateful I got to experience all of these kind of demon thoughts at a younger age so that I can like get 25 and be like I I learned this lesson already Yes. You know, I'm going to fuel my body, you know? My mom tells me that all the time. She's like, I love that your generation has (laughs) such a quicker timeline of get cutting through the bullshit (laughs) because I didn't learn even an inch of the tip of the iceberg until I was in my thirties and forties. So think of all the damage they had done leading up to, that's a lot of time to reverse and heal. And undo. Right. Mm -hmm. So the earlier we can do this, um, is phenomenal. Pushing health, being, being so conscious about uh, yeah. that more than anything, than an image, just as long as your body is healthy, whatever way that looks, live your best life, live your absolute best life. You're doing the damn thing. I am very proud of you. <laughs> it's wonderful. And I'm really uh, appreciative of your candidness. Um, yeah. I want to get a little bit into life after share and yeah. how that goes for you, because I know also, like we were talking about the highs, highs, you experienced a very high, high of quick adrenaline, living your life for what, how long was Cher on Broadway? Was it a year and some odd? Almost a year. I think it's like 10 months or something. Yeah. Yeah. Still a lot of time and with rehearsals and everything going at it. And then for that to drop off and then kind of, all right, well now I've, I've it's pinnacle of, of a peak of where the highest form of theater I can get to now what? So what was your now what, where would you kind of like directionally, where were you ready to go? What did you feel? Well, so I did a play mm-hmm. right after I flew to LA and did a play that um, Ethan Cohen, one of the Cohen brothers, wrote. Mm-hmm. And um, oddly, it was like uh, a very different experience, right? Because like I'm in like 1970s dress and very just like crazy, like all words, 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 words. Yes. Um, and it was amazing. Such a fun process. Such a small, beautiful cast. Um, and you know. I'm at my opening and it's like Francis McDormand, Brad Pitt, like all these crazy people are there. Like ju- just everyone who I admired in a different way than right. Cher, right? All these people who were completely unattainable, right? Stephanie was right. what I wanted to be. And you Brad Pitt, I was like, I'm now. never going to meet him. Right, right. <laughs> so yeah. that was a beautiful experience in and of itself. And yeah. then, yeah. you know, there was a bit of a drop off that I think um, truthfully, I enjoyed, I think I was so tired and I was so wanting to, um, 
create my days with things that I had been wanting to do when I was tired, which is funny because I say that and yet those things really didn't happen. So if you're, if you're a person who's like, I'm not, I'm, I can't do that because I'm too busy. There's probably another reason why you're not doing it. And it probably has to do with like some kind of fear about those things. Oh yeah. Fun like process to figure out. Right. Um, Definitely. I think top majority of us that they're like, look at all this time you have and half of us did not venture into the things we thought we would. (laughs) So I hear there's something deeper, right? Like you're afraid of that stuff. You're afraid of failing that thing that you wanted to try, whatever it is. And then, um, you know, I'm having the, these months that are passing that are like, I'm doing work here and there. And I'm like, I, you know, for my whole life wanted to be on Broadway. Yeah. Um, and then got that right. really young. And, and there was a little bit of a, like, of course there's film TV to do, but that's going to take longer to book. And I'm not as good at that naturally, I think. So I really need to work on that skill. And so but at the same time, I was like, what's next? Like, I kind of want to do, what else do I love to do? Good for, yeah. Because acting was a hobby and I made it a career. So right. like, what else do I love that I do in my daily life that I want to be a career? Mm-hmm. And I just couldn't stop thinking about cooking. I cooked every day. Ah. This was before quarantine too. Like, this was like a thing I had always been thinking about. Yeah. Um, and so I'm like three months into culinary school right now. Oh, you already fast forwarded one of my questions. I was like, I fast forwarded. I fast forwarded. Currently, I'm I'm just in cooking school, and um, I'm doing that right now. But I don't know where that's going to take me. I have, of course, I like still love theater, and of course, they still want to do it. But there is a huge part of me that's like, I also love this other thing and want to explore that. And because I'm young, I think like I might have the time to see like which one I want to do or how I can connect them. Like there has to be a bigger connection than Fifty Four Below. Like I'm sure there's larger, larger connection to like food and I have music. to find this gap. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's I'm crazy. trying to find that. That's beautiful because I think so many people, Michaela, it's it's really uplifting to hear you say it because I think I hear so many times really successful actors and actresses that have just been on that kind of like, you know, hamster wheel their whole life of just, I booked the next movie and then boom, this big opportunity came and after opportunity after opportunity and you don't ever stop. You're just kind of riding that wave and it is filled with a lot of fun shit, cool opportunities, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. nice money. So I understand what keeps you going. But I don't know if you watched that um, series with Zac Efron on, I think it was Netflix, where he like- I watched a few episodes, yeah. I'm dead. And I'm going to touch on it first, right. only because like, what? But it's crazy to watch him, like Zac Efron, like who yeah. is what I imagine him to be. And then him being like, you know what? The industry is just, I need to get out. Like <laughs> it came out so many times in the series, him just being like, it's a, all a bunch of shit. Like there's really like, there's so many other layers to the world and what people love to do and what makes the world go round. It's not just this entertainment bubble that's, you know, curated by so much culture and other things. And finding it within yourself too is something even deeper of like, yeah, you know what I do and I'm good at acting and I've been successful at it and I've had some really great highs, but I like that you're tapping into other passions and actually exploring them, not just like maybe. Well, I didn't have any other ones. And I was like, (laughs) um, I I can't, I want to do like other things besides this so that like every single time I'm waiting around for a job, I don't have to feel worthless. Like Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. not feeling. And of course, like I have friends who like are in the business who do that yes, and who are fine. You know what I mean? Like they experience their highs and then they're low for a while and then they experience their highs and that's a fine way to live. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, I think like either I have too much anxiety during those lows or I'm just like not fulfilled enough during those lows to like just do that. Right. Right. And so I was like, let me try this other thing that I also love mm-hmm. that I'm also like not as naturally good at that I, that takes me more time to figure out like Grandpa. who I want to be in this world. Right. Yeah. Right, right. Um, and so I do think like there are so many highs to this business, which is the, you know, all of those people in high school who did theater shows and hated the whole process and then finished their three show weekend. And we're like, when's the next audition? Right. Because you forget, you forget, you forget that high Mm -hmm. makes you 
completely forget the yeah. whole, all of the anxiety, the long, hours, the 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 long hours, everything. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, not only was I like only in one show, but I was like, I am remembering those lows now. I'm getting to a point where like, yeah, we're almost what even. Right off. Yeah. And, and I don't want to get to the even part yet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, no, I, I need to. Like heavily fulfilled in some other places and I feel lucky that I have this other thing that I love because I know a lot of other people are like I don't know what that thing is yes um yes and so like you know I'm happy that I've I've kind of found this thing and in investing heavily I love that people think the switch can be so easy it's not because again it's another I mean, people take years and, and whatever to invest in this career, if you will. And I don't know the lengths into which you want to explore it, but yeah, it's an inv- it's investment of your time, your money, exactly. energy. You're learning a whole new craft, yeah. essentially. A hundred percent. And, you know, starting from, from level one. So, right. yeah. Um, yeah, it's a completely different world, but also just really, really feel lucky that I found it. I love mm-hmm. that. That's really powerful. Because also the thing that I like that you're mentioning about the lows and seeing what type of person you are, rather than listening to all the other people and their experiences of what the lows mean for them, you really took a moment to explore, well, what does it mean for you? How does it affect you? You're different. You you aren't everybody else. So maybe they are able to kind of have their kind of depressing months in between their next high or gig where they're like, okay, whew, back on. But yeah, I, I also felt that where it's like, if you, I was getting to the place where like you had said, the equal of the good and the bad were getting too close. Yeah. There wasn't an out, enough outweighing my experiences and in working in the industry. There were way more things that I was not excited about than I used to be so head over heels about. It just wasn't worth it to me anymore. That's why this platform has created another like ongoing. No, yes, exactly. You, you fill in your blank and it's true. It takes a minute and you really do have to assess for people listening. I think it's wise, whether it be a whole new craft or just an avenue to help soothe these anxieties or when life naturally is sil- you know, silical and it goes in its lows to fill in that space to help you be as healthy and happy as possible. And it might not look like everybody else's anything. You know, a lot of people are like, I do yoga and I do all these other fun things to play. That that's never literally been my way of feeling sort of releases. I try because I know it is beneficial, but it's not enough in those low moments to pull me out of what I'm feeling mentally or emotionally or physically. So I need something else to obtain me. Do you feel like when you're cooking and doing that, it's kind of like a, especially from an actor standpoint, it's way less pressure because when you're acting, the canvas, if you will, is you. So you're on stage and everything's being looked at. But when you're working and that's your, you know, the food is the focus, you kind of get to be behind scenes a little bit. You're still the master of it. But like the focus isn't on me, you know? Exactly right. It's a whole new sense of not pressure. And I think that's a lovely thing. And I'm sure hopefully maybe is a part of why you took it up um, or at least became of interest, maybe. I think it's a big part of it, but I do think that it's more this like, um, like adrenaline. It's the same exact adrenaline I get. Like right before I'm about to go on stage, it's like while I'm furiously and like, you know, learning to not be so furious and more just like really specific, but um, like, it's the same thing. Like, you know, yeah. in class, like you have to make perfect medium diced potatoes, right? Half inch by half inch by half inch. And when you present those perfect half inch potatoes, it's like that exact same heartbeat that you get right before going on stage. Oh and it's God. like, I think it's that adrenaline that yeah, I miss. 100%. I think it's that high. And you're filling it in. And it's like almost not as high, which I like. Like, not when I was, yes. it's not when like I was, a toxic boyfriend. It's the just right kind of love. <laughs> that's exactly right. Like when I'm like right before opening, yeah. I was like, this is what drugs feel like. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure. Like I'm positive. I'm positive. This is LSD. Yeah. You know what I mean? like, yes. I'm sure this is Coke. I know this is how it feels. Because it does feel out of control. It does. It's, it feels like, holy crap, my body is shaking. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like, medium diced potatoes. It's like, this is scary. (laughs) This is scary. There's a knife in my hand. I've cut myself so many times, but it's like, that is a very similar adrenaline without being the toxic boy. I I love that for you, (laughs) that you found healing in potatoes. But let me tell you, are you now, are you going into school? 
Yeah, it's in person. Stop it. Okay, so that's lovely. And is it all okay? When you say culinary, that's not that's not baking. That's pure food. Yeah, I'm not doing the pastry program, even though that also sounds lovely. Yeah. Um, no, I'm doing the full like culinary program. Um, and you know, in between gigs, we'll be like a line cook. Like, yeah. how fun. into that? What? And then you're like, sir. Oh no. Well, if you're the line cook, you're in the back, right? You're in the kitchen. Back. I was gonna say, like, come out, and they're like, aren't you? And you're like, and you just. That's start. funny. <laughs> That's funny. That's Some funny. restaurants do that, I'm sure. But yes. Oh well, I um, love that for you. Well, I guess I mean you've given us so many gems. I feel like kind of want to wrap you up and ask you a couple little like shoot sure. back questions, baby. Questions. I want to know. Um, I mean, oh gosh, so you're going to hate me because you're going to be like, Rachel, I'm going to repeat myself. Good Lord. One, one of two things. One, what is your biggest piece of advice that you would give to younger artists, male or female coming up into the business? What's like a sound piece of advice that you would offer them? Um, I think it's funny. I get this question all the time sure. and it's always so hard for me. Um, I tell them everything. I think, um, find find other things that give you joy. I, love that. I hate the reason I, I, I hesitate with saying that is because I hated that answer. When yeah. I was younger and people said that, I was like, Ugh, I love what I'm saying. doing. Right, right. Don't have you to don't do that. Have. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not saying don't love what you're doing. I'm saying continue to love that so much and then continue to search for other small things that make you happy. They can be so small, yeah. just like a bath in the middle of an afternoon on a winter day. It doesn't have to be like specific things, just like yeah, monumental change. Right. Yeah. Just like really start to just notice what makes you happy and then do those things Love that them. the second part is also just as important. Like you, I can recognize like journaling makes me happy and then not journal. And I it's like, you have to do, you have to do both. Got to back it up. Yeah. And even if it's awkward and uncomfortable at the beginning to force yourself to do and these things because I know at the end of the day yes working out makes me feel better even my the stretch yes. and the oh my gosh 100 percent because it's my, all of my mental health it, yeah it just is it pushes me in this space but I have to listen to some fun music to get me in that mental space like help curate that happiness so I love yes. that that's very well put my other question for you is what is the ultimate vision for you as Michaela and I'm asking you now at how old are you I'm 21 21, because I know this will change. And that's what I love about people. That's part of the evolution. It will be a very different vision throughout all different parts of your life and quarters. But at 21, project for me what your life you envision for yourself in the next five years. Where do you want <gasps> things to go? I know. But listen, people ask me this a lot and it helps me. No, you kind of know what's hilarious. In the line, you know? That but question is the exact, like all of a sudden there's a voice talking like, this is going to be egotistical and da, da 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 And it's like, as women, sometimes we just have to remind ourselves that like, this is the time to like, take up the space and figure out what you want in those five years. So I do love the question. It's just like a, Oh God, what, what do what I say? Do I do? Do? Bad. Yeah. No, no. Um, gosh, there's so many things. Yeah. I do want to experience more, more film and TV sets. I would like love to, to figure out if that's something I even like. Right. You know, I exactly. haven't done right. to figure that out. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'd also really love to try and find that through line between mm -hmm. music and um, yeah. and food, and find a space that is really safe for people to um, be advocates for themselves, for their group of people, for whoever they you know, want to fight for in this world and somehow connect that to music and food. All, yeah. all of, you know, yeah, political advocacy, food and music are all that's of these things that I love. But that's so how? important. That's, that's how you start the recipe. A girl, a good girl yeah. that was telling me the other day, she was like, write down, write down the top 10 things you love seriously and try to find either. Maybe you have to create the space, but there line. might be a job or a right. place where you can feel all these things you love, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I want to find that in the next five years and then, you know, start to start to build on that, whether it's like opening a freaking restaurant where, or like having a pop-up every month or whatever it is. Um, but I want to figure that out. I love that. That's a beautiful vision and I love it. And you have been so wonderful to talk to my dear. And I love you. getting you in this space. I was like, oh, I know she has, and you always surprise me. 
That's the thing. You really do. Because you're always, you're like me, and that's why I feel like I, I connected with you, is like you're always, you do a lot of inner work. And you think a lot in different layers of things, which I appreciate because my brain is going like this all the time that I'm just like, anybody? <laughs> so you, you get it. And I so appreciate you in sharing all your stuff with me today about your experience of Broadway and coming up in the industry. Thank you so much for your time, my dear. I appreciate it. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Guys, stay tuned. Follow Michaela Diamond. We're putting all her stuff on below. Keep up with her and her journey, her now culinary experiences, wow. and all that's to come in the next years. Michaela, thank you. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.